All right, I'm back again. I'm just, this is another video. I'm just continuing making this Mastodon bot. And uh, I got some uh, good tips. First of all, I did kind of like a goofy thing here. This .env uh, package, for, it's, I guess, good practice or tradition, convention to just put it at the first thing. And I could just call .env config. I don't need to save it in a variable. I can do this just in one line of code. So let me clean that up. That's a little bit nicer now. Um, the other thing that I want to do is, I want to um, make this bot post every so often. And so a quick way that I can do that is with the set interval function. So, oh, you know what I should also do? Look at this. Uh, let me show you something. So one thing that I often like to do, um, so if I run this right now, um, actually I just ran it, you can see this is the response that I get after I post to Mat Mastodon. So I get each toot has a, an ID, it has a timestamp, it has metadata about whether it's a reply to something, it has its content, you can see it's uh, formatted with HTML. So what I actually would like to do is not just console log all of this JSON data to the, to the console, I would like to just pick and choose a few things to console log out as kind of debugging information. And also something that I often like to do, um, just to kind of like help me with this kind of stuff, is use um, the built-in node uh, file system package. So I'm going to require file system. This is not a package I need to install. It just comes with Node, if, you know, whatever version of Node you're using. Um, and I'm actually going to say right here, I'm going to say file system dot um, uh, write file sync, which is uh, synchronous file writing. And then I'm going to say uh, I want to write this data. Uh, oh, actually, the path is first. And then the thing that I want to write, which is probably json.stringify. I want to stringify the data. Um, and I want it to have two space, two space tabs. Um, and then I need to write this file out. So I could just say data.json. And then if I run this again, um, we should see now all of a sudden I have a new JSON file that's uh, appeared in my uh, directory here. And I can look at it. And now if I want to kind of like, figure out what's the data that I get back. I have this as a reference. So I can now, um, and I could timestamp the name of the file and all sorts of things like that, but I can now go and I can just comment this out. And I can, now I could be more thoughtful about this and I could say, uh, you know, console.log, you know, success, ID, uh, and then I could put, sorry, I need to go back here and I could say it's data.id uh, created at. Um, so I would go back here and I would say uh, data.id plus uh, data.created uh, at. You know what? Actually, this is a good moment. I really should just do a separate video on this entirely because it's such a wonderful feature of, of JavaScript now. But I can actually, you know how I'm always doing this console logging, some text and then some variable stuff and I'm joining it with a plus and concatenation. You can use something called template literals, which is a way of embedding expressions inside of a string. And the way to do that is with, instead of quotes, with backticks. So if I put a backtick at the start and the beginning, I no longer need this plus. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get rid of all this nonsense. Um, success, you know, ID, I'm just gonna do ID um, and timestamp, colon. And so now this is a string. And it has basically, like, I want ID. This is what I want to literally see. And then what I want to see is the value of this. And the way that I do that is with dollar sign, curly bracket, curly bracket. So now anything inside of here is an expression. So I could write 4 plus 7, and it would, it would, it would, it would put 11 in the string. And then I can say time stampy. Uh, I can make this like this. Um, and now we can run this again one more time node bot.js, and we can see this is what I get now, ID and timestamp. So this is what's going to, I'm going to see, and maybe it'll be useful for me to also put the content there. Who knows what I want to log in console.log, but I want to be more thoughtful about that, not just spit out massive amounts of JSON data. Okay, let's get to the good part. Now, what I want to do as my first example of a bot is I want to make a random number bot. So I am going to say, I'm going to use template literals again, uh, I'm going to say the meaning of life is, and then I'm going to use an expression. I'm going to say uh, math.floor, math, you know, let me put this in a separate variable. const num equals math.floor, 
math.random times 100. We'll see if we get 42. And then I'm going to just put that here. Um, and now this, my bot should now post the meaning of life is this random number. So math.random gives me a random number, a floating point number between 0 and 1. I multiply that by 100, so I get a number between 0 and 100. I mean, technically the highest number is 99.99999. And then math.floor takes off the decimal point, so I now have a random number between 0 and 99. I could add 1 if I want between 1 and 100, whatever. That's not the point. The point is now, and you know what? I really would like to see from the console um, what it posted, so I'm also just going to do this. Console log uh, data dot, what was it? If I, now I can go back to my data dot JSON and it's going to be, um, where is the content? Uh, content, just data dot content. Um, so I'm going to say data dot content. We're getting somewhere. So let's run this one more time. Success, the meaning of life is 95. Okay, did we get it? We can go here, we can double check and Somehow I went away from there. The meaning of life is 95. Great. Okay, now two more things I want to do to make this bot exciting. I am now going to use set interval. So the idea here is this is all of my code to post to Mastodon. And again, if this is new to you, if you've, if you've just been watching my P5.js videos, this weird syntax, this arrow syntax, part of ES6 JavaScript, might be unfamiliar to you. I will put a link to a video where I describe what arrow syntax is in this video's description. Um, okay, so now what I want to do is all this stuff here is basically just a function called toot, right? Because what I want to do is this function will pick a random number, create the status, and post it. What I want to do is I want to say now set interval, and I want to do this toot every 5,000 milliseconds, which would be every five seconds. Now this is a bit extreme. This is probably this is not really appropriate bot etiquette to have a bot that posts every five seconds. So you know, a, probably a, a much more thoughtful way of doing this if you're going to have a bot that posts in an automated way. Maybe it's a word of the day or a haiku of the day. Maybe it's just once a day, once an hour. I'm going to run this every five seconds, which is reasonable just for testing. Um, something interesting though about set interval is like, what if I make this like every um, 50 seconds? If I run this right now, I'm gonna wait 50 seconds for it to do it the first time. So, and that's not really such a great thing. So I am going to actually also just call it once first and then do it every five seconds. Okay, here we go. Got meaning of life is, whoa, it really picked 99? That is awesome. Uh, and it's 48. Oh, we're getting close to 42. We can see it's doing this every five seconds. I'm going to quit out of it um, and I'm going to go back to here. We can see there it is. These are my posts that I did. You can see 10 seconds ago, 10 seconds ago. Now, I mean, this is really five seconds ago. All right, so here's the thing. I want to show you. There's so much more. Remember how I made this these parameters, all I'm doing is saying this is the status that I want to post automatically from my node program. Well, one of the things that I can actually do is I can go back to the documentation. There are all these other things. So media IDs is something I really want to show you in a future video. It's a way I can include an image or other media with the, with the post. But one thing that I can do that's kind of fun is just this spoiler text thing. So what spoiler text does, it allows me to have sort of two aspects um, to the post. The meaning of life is, and then the status can just be num. So I'm going to break this up into two parts, and I need a comma here, and I'm just going to show you what this looks like. So I'm using these parameters, different properties of the JavaScript object that's going to go here into my post call, and I'm going to now run this one more time, and I'm going to go back to my bot, and I'm going to look, and you can see, look at this, the meaning of life, but I now have this nice show more button. So spoiler alert, if you click on this, you'll see that it's 52 or that it's 23. And again, I'm doing this too often, so I'm going to absolutely quit this. And then if I wanted to do, now if I want to have my bot post once a day, every 24 hours, I can just go right back to my code and I can say get a set interval should be uh, 24 hours. There's 60 minutes, at 24 hours. 60 minutes an hour, 60 seconds an hour, and 1,000 milliseconds in a second. So now, here we go. We now have a bot, a Mastodon bot, that will post 
a numeric meaning of life once a day. So in theory, if I just left this running here and never closed my laptop or never did anything, this would just run forever and once a day post. The truth of the matter is you're gonna have to think about, well, once you've created your bot, like where are you going, where's that bot gonna live? I mean, you could have it live on your laptop or computer that's always plugged in and always connected to the internet, but more likely you're gonna to wanna to host it on a web server, on some sort of server, or maybe get a Raspberry Pi and plug it into the wall and have it always sitting there connected to the internet. I will cover that in future videos. In fact, I have I've covered that for how to deploy a Twitter bot, and ultimately, it's exactly the same thing, but just now the code has changed and it's working with Mastodon. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a bunch of other kinds of things you can do in bots, most notably um, listen. So the streaming API is a way that I could connect and I could say, anybody, if anybody ever mentions me, I could reply to them. So I could have a bot that participates in a conversation. One thing you should really think about, and I'll talk about this again at the beginning of the next video, I mentioned bot etiquette, etiquette but the idea, if you really wanna be thoughtful about making a bot, that's not suddenly going to spam people. So it's not gonna just pick random Mastodon users and start at mentioning them, or start picking random posts and replying to them. You really want your bot to engage when people opt in to engage. So maybe you only wanna uh, post messages to people who have chosen to follow the bot or chosen to mention the bot already in, in a particular post. So I, I just I can't say, I'm saying post because I haven't gotten comfortable. Just when I got comfortable saying tweet, I'm now no longer comfortable saying toot, but I'll get there, I'll get there eventually. Okay, see you in the next video.